Welcome to part 2 of Earth 2 Golden Age Heroes. Before we proceed, please make sure to have watched part 1 to better understand what is Golden Age Earth 2, how it was created, its difference with Earth 1, and why Jay Garrick and Barry Allen are significant pivotal characters for the creation of the DC multiverse. Link for part 1 is on the description section. Let's get it on. Before we continue further in knowing the Golden Age heroes, we need to recognize the different teams created during the Golden Age or supposedly placed in Earth 2 and they are the Justice Society of America, the Seven Soldiers of Victory, the Freedom Fighters, the All-Star Squadron, and the Infinity Inc. The Justice Society of America, the first superhero team in comics history, was merely a suggestion made by President Roosevelt to Superman and Batman to unite the mass crime fighters that were previously called the Mystery Men. At the start of the Second World War, President Roosevelt was still hesitant to join the war but the Nazi party has already spread its terror in Europe, and so he asked the masked heroes to help Europe. Thus, the heroes were given missions in different locations. Batman, Flash, and Green Lantern were sent to Glasgow, Scotland. They failed there but were rescued by Dr. Fate and Our Man in Berlin, Germany. Hawkman, Atom, and Sandman helped British forces in Dover, England, and the Spectre in the English Channel. Finally, Superman stopped the bomber in attacking Washington, D.C., and the Atom saved the president. When they all convened at the president's office, Roosevelt encouraged them to form a group. Hawkman suggested the name of Super Battalion, but Superman insisted that their purpose should be for justice, hence the name Justice Society of America. The Seven Soldiers of Victory, aka the Lost Legionnaires, is a short-lived group consisting of Green Arrow, Speedy, the Crimson Avenger, the Shining Knight, the Vigilante, Star Spangled Kid, Stripesy, and Wing. They were created when each of their nemesis, Big Caesar, the Dummy, the Needle, Professor Merlin and the Red Dragon banded together under the influence of their mastermind, the Hand. The Hand gave these villains his schemes for crimes around the US and strategies to eliminate the heroes. Of course, the heroes won in the end and they realized they are more effective together, so the Seven Soldiers of Victory was born. The Freedom Fighters are heroes originally from quality comics that were assigned in Earth X. However, this version of Freedom Fighters joined in the All-Star Squadron as a subgroup during World War II and were eventually placed in the main DC timeline. To know more about the original Freedom Fighter characters and their origins, please see my video about Earth X or Earth 10 and the link is in the description of this video. Fourth and somewhat confusing is the All-Star Squadron. The All-Star Squadron was first introduced in a 1981 publication of the Justice League just before the Crisis on Infinite Earth saga. Although this group was created and published in the 1980s, the plots or stories of this team were set in the 1940s and most members were also introduced during the Golden Age, which is the reason they belong in Earth 2. Some of the backstories released in the 80s and or 90s even provided retroactive continuity or slight changes to their Golden Age origins but are still very much connected to the original. Unlike the Justice Society that started only as an informal suggestion of President Roosevelt, the All-Star Squadron started with the official initiative of President Roosevelt called Article X that drafted masked American superheroes during World War II after the bombing of Pearl Harbor to join forces as a single wartime organization. Roosevelt tried to contact the JSA but was unsuccessful as most of them are missing in action or captured by Per de Gaton. The squadron's primary task is to secure the home front and counter enemy sabotage. The Axis powers use the Spear of Destiny to control superpowered beings such as Superman, Green Lantern, and Dr. Fate to follow Hitler, which is why the squadron operates mostly in mainland US to avoid the influence of the Spear. This team was said to have been created two years after the Justice Society was created, and most of its members were also from the JSA, the Freedom Fighters, and the Seven Soldiers. The first members were Dr. Midnight, Plastic Man, The Atom, Johnny Quick, Liberty Bell, Hawkman, and Robot Man. Their first mission was to stop Japanese forces in the West Coast. Fifth group in Earth 2 is the Infinity Inc., a group that was created in 1983 and predominantly composed of the descendants of the original members of the Justice Society of America, such as Silver Scarab, son of Hawkman, Lyta Trevor, daughter of Wonder Woman, Nuclon, godson of the first Atom, Brainwave Jr., son of the supervillain Brainwave, 
North Wind, Godson of Hawkman, and Jade and Obsidian, Children of the First Green Lantern. When they were denied by the senior heroes to join the Justice Society, Star Spangled Kid, Power Girl, and Huntress, who were currently members of the JSA, thought that these newbies should be given a chance. So they formed a new group and called themselves Infinity Inc. They are like the Earth 2 version of the Teen Titans. Their first enemy was the Ultra Humanite. After the Infinite Crisis saga, Earth 2 was destroyed and their stories were mixed into the new Earth storylines, much like what happened to the JSA members. Now, let's resume our research about the Golden Age heroes. Rex TikTok Tyler, aka Our Man, was raised in Ithaca, New York, with a passion for chemistry and biology. When he was young, he was visited by his future self, who gave him an hourglass and said he will be back for it in his final hour. In college, he got a job in Bannerman Chemical, researching about hormone supplements. Numerous experimental accidents led to his discovery of Miraclo, that gave extreme vigor and strength to a laboratory mice. When he tested it to himself, he experienced astounding strength, vitality, and speed. However, the effects of the Miraclo solution would only last for an hour at a time. He decided to use his Miraclo-induced abilities for good and placed an ad that the man of the hour would help the needy. His first case was from a housewife whose husband fell into the wrong crowd and stopped a robbery. Using a costume from an abandoned costume shop, he became the hour man. He soon became a member of the Justice Society. Then he faced more powerful foes, so he fortified his Miraclo solution, leading for him to become addicted to Miraclo. It made him anxious and talkative when using it. His body became poisoned by the toxins, and his heart gave out. Dr. Fate cleansed him, and this started his retirement stage, as using it even occasionally can cause great physical and emotional strain. Rex then devoted his time to biochemical research and bought Bannerman Chemical and renamed it Tyler Chemical Company or Tyler Co. He also secretly modified the Miracle formula for it to fit perfectly to his son Rick and his other descendants. Midnight has no patience for evildoers. I'm afraid none of us are. Not anymore. The enemy we always underestimated has finally thwarted us. Dr. Midnight Dr. Charles McNider was creating a new antiviral serum when he was asked to operate on and save a witness who was shot at the back by the men of a known gangster, Killer Maroney. When Maroney discovered that the witness was still alive, the gangster threw a grenade in the hospital room that killed everyone except for Dr. McNider. However, shards of glass flew right into his eyes and made him blind. He went into intense therapy after the incident and discovered that he had more energy during the night. Now that his medical career is gone, McNider became a writer with Myra, his nurse assistant, typing his words and sending them to the publisher. One night, he was surprised by the sound of an owl crashing through his window. He tore off his eye bandages and realized that he has good vision in the dark. He turned on the lights and realized he is blind again, which means he only has night vision. He took care and adopted the owl and named him Hootie. With his night vision, he embarked on fighting gangsters at night. He learned jiu-jitsu and created his infrared goggles that enabled him to see clearly and temporarily see during the daylight. He also created blackout bombs that could emit dark clouds blinding his enemies. He also took a black and red costume from a costume shop and gauntlets that carry a wide variety of chemicals and medicines. From there, Dr. Midnight was born. He then raided Maroney's townhouse and brought him and his men to justice. He focused more on organized crime and busted up several racketeering outfits run by the likes of Gallus Gallagher. He soon met other scientists using their inventions for villainy, such as Professor Elba who created the insanity formula that can make people act like animals. He sought the help of the Justice Society and defeated Professor Elba. He also became a member of the JSA. He briefly became Starman when the original Starman had a nervous breakdown. He also invented a weapon called Kyra Tuber which can hack into the nervous system of another person, thereby controlling that person's movements and it can also freeze human flesh. As Charles McNider grew older, he focused less on crime fighting and turned his attention back towards medicine. He became a medical instructor to several future prominent physicians. 
He then became an in-house physician for the group Infinity Inc. in California. He eventually died when the JSA reunited for the last time during the Zero Hour story against the villain Extant. His mantle was taken by his former students, Beth Chappell, who joined Infinity Inc., and Peter Cross, who also had an owl named Charlie. Wonder Woman Thousands of years ago, the goddess Aphrodite created the rays of Amazons on a Greek island called Amazonia with Hippolyte as their queen. In rage of their all-female society, the god Mars influenced Hercules to seduce Hippolyte, steal her magic girdle given by Aphrodite that protects them, and enslave the entire population of the Amazons. Hippolyte appealed to Aphrodite for help, so the goddess freed the Amazons, helped them reclaim the girdle, but were tasked to wear the wristbands forever to remind them of the follies of men. These bands were later called Bracelets of Submission. They were soon guided by Aphrodite to the distant Paradise Island, where they became immortals. Athena gave them the magic sphere that allowed Hippolyte to see distant lands in man's world. Guided by Athena, Hippolyte learned to carve a human figure out of clay. Aphrodite granted Hippolyte's wish of a daughter and gave life to the clay figure. She named her Diana after the moon goddess, mistress of the chase. At the age of three, Diana has the strength of Hercules, the speed of Mercury at the age of five, received the waters of eternal youth, and obtained the bracelets of submission at the age of 15. In 1941, Captain Steve Trevor crash-landed near Paradise Island. Aphrodite and Athena expressed that Steve's arrival was a sign that the Amazons should choose a champion to be sent to America to fight tyranny and spread love and peace to man's world. Hippolyte organized the tournament to select their champion. Against her mother's wishes, Diana joined the tournament while wearing a mask and won. Hippolyte gave her a costume with the colors of America, a magic lasso made from her girdle, and an invisible plane to carry Steve back to America. There, Diana became known as Wonder Woman. In Washington, D.C., she placed Steve Trevor in Walter Reed Hospital. Outside the hospital, she then met Diana Prince, an army nurse who desperately needed money to be reunited with her fiancé in South America. Wonder Woman bought the nurse's identification and credentials and took her position as a nurse in the hospital. Afterwards, she became a secretary for Colonel Darnell, Steve's superior. When she visited Holiday College, she came across Etta Kendi, president of the Beta Lambda sorority, who at that time helped Diana Prince and Steve in army intelligence. Wonder Woman would help Steve defeat many Axis spies such as Dr. Poison and Baroness Paula von Gunther. And because this is during the World War II, Wonder Woman performed in public exhibitions around the country with Green Lantern, The Flash, and Wildcat to promote the sale of defense bonds. She continued to support the Allied forces and joined the Justice Society of America as its secretary. She helped Paula von Gunther, one of her enemies, retrieve her daughter from the German camps. Paula von Gunther would then save Wonder Woman and later reform in Paradise Island with her daughter. He later fought Mars, the god of war, and ousted him from his Martian kingdom and met the cheetah, Priscilla Rich, for the first time. After the war, she used the magic sphere to help the JSA rectify Per de Gaton's tampering with history, battled the injustice society of the world, and resurrected the men of the JSA using the Purple Ray. In the 1960s, Wonder Woman married Steve Trevor and had a daughter named Lyta Trevor. She also met her counterpart in Earth-1, who at that time lost her Amazon powers. After Batman's death, Diana and Steve retired and settled in a mansion in Virginia. After the Crisis on Infinite Earth saga, Earth-2 was erased and Diana and Steve were placed by Zeus in Olympus to live forever. Johnny Thunder Johnny Thunder was born at 7 a.m. on the seventh day of the seventh month and is the seventh son of a seventh son. The country of Badnesia had been looking for a child born like him because they knew he would inherit great powers on his seventh birthday, power that they can use to rule the world. The Badnesians kidnapped him as an infant, performed mystic rituals over him, and gave him the magical zodiac belt, 
all in order to gain control over the djinn, the thunderbolt named Yiz. However, when Johnny was 5 years old, Badnesia was attacked by a neighboring country and with the protection of the Zodiac Belt, Johnny escaped and was safely returned to the US. On his 7th birthday, there was a worldwide rain for 7 days. He inadvertently summoned the Thunderbolt with the magic word Say You, which he unintentionally used to become a successful boxer. The innocent Johnny thought that he himself was causing the supernatural events as Thunderbolt was invisible. In due course, he figured out Thunderbolt's existence and learned how to summon him and join the Justice Society of America. He also enlisted in the Navy during World War II. Somehow, he lost his control over his thunderbolt because of a spell casted by the Badnesian priests. He was kidnapped again by Badnesians and installed him as their king. When Johnny died because of the ultra-humanite, thunderbolt merged with Johnny's soul and they became one being taking the name of Johnny Thunderbolt. Black Canary The epitome of the new film noir era heroine, the first Black Canary, Dinah Drake, is an athletic, fearless, covert, yet romantic character who first appeared in 1947 as a fascinating crook with a mask and blonde hair. Johnny Thunder was immediately enamored by her and is criticized by his Thunderbolt. Dinah is later revealed to have been actually infiltrating a criminal gang. In her real life, she is a black-haired florist who is in love with Larry Lance, a Gotham police detective. When she was young, she was trained by her father to become a fighter. His father was a lieutenant at the Gotham Police Department and he made Dinah build strength and endurance through rigorous trainings out of fear of losing her like her mother. She was taught with boxing, gymnastics, martial arts, and was brought to some of his police actions. Her father soon died of a heart attack and she was also rejected by the police academy because the few police women positions were already filled. However, she got an administrative position in the police department as a favor to her father, but because her mother taught her about flowers when she was alive, she chose to open a flower shop instead. But that was a lie, as she secretly wanted to be a masked vigilante like Batman and Green Lantern. And because her dad always called her Little Bird, she started calling herself as Black Canary. The locker on her choker around her neck have varying items that she uses in crime fighting. She soon became a renowned crime fighter and met the Justice Society when she tried to rescue Johnny Thunder who was seemingly killed. On his dying breath, he asked Black Canary to go to the JSA headquarters where she met Wonder Woman for the first time. Wonder Woman found that the other members were also attacked. The two brought the whole team to a laboratory and revived them. Black Canary helped them resolve their apparent killers. With her cunning investigative skills and many solves later, she was soon elected to be an official member of the JSA. Dinah later married Larry Lance and she participated in the many adventures that created a team-up between Earth 1's Justice League of America and Earth 2 Justice Society of America. One of these adventures was when they were manipulated by a star creature named Aquarius to fight against each other. Larry Lance was killed while saving Dinah and Aquarius was defeated. With too much grief, Dinah chose to move to Earth-1 and joined the Justice League of America. With the JLA in Earth-1, she developed a relationship with the Green Arrow and developed an ultrasonic high-pitched harmonic scream which is called the Canary Cry. She had a daughter with Larry Lance whose name is Dinah Laura Lance who would become the modern-day Black Canary. It was later retconned that when her daughter was born, her enemy, the wizard, came to their house and cursed the child with uncontrollable but very powerful ultrasonic scream. They sought the help of Johnny Thunder and Thunderbolt brought her to his cosmos where she would grow but in suspended animation, unable to harm anyone. Without all of them knowing, Thunderbolt erased this memory from Dinah, Larry, and Johnny about the child without them knowing. During the fight with Aquarius and after the death of Larry Lance, Dinah Drake was infected with Aquarius' radiation energy enough to kill her. At this time, their daughter has already grown into womanhood. Thunderbolt transferred Dinah Drake's memories to her daughter and then erased her memory of the transfer. Superman of Earth-1 brought her to Earth-1. Now having the body of her daughter, this is the reason why she suddenly had an ultrasonic scream power when she arrived in Earth-1. The Golden Age Sandman, Wesley Dodds, came from a rich Jewish Catholic household. 
His father fought during the First World War and his mother died during that time. When he was young, he and his father would travel the Orient where he learned martial arts, herbalism, and origami. Although he wanted to become a writer, he became a businessman when his father died as he inherited his vast estate. He also served in the U.S. Navy as a pilot. In 1916, Dream of the Endless, an entity that has the power over sleep and dreams, was imprisoned by Roderick Burgess on Earth and was prohibited from fulfilling his duties. In an attempt to correct itself, the universe gifted many people with fractions of Dream's powers, including Wesley Dodds, who became afflicted with intense dreams of murder and criminal activities. Using his herbalism skills, Wesley then built a laboratory in his townhouse basement and developed a formula for sedative and hypnotic gases. He then bought gas masks, called himself the Sandman, and pursued the criminals that haunted his dreams, such as Dr. Death, the Scorpion, and the Butcher. He would always leave these villains with a palm enclosed in an origami. He then encountered the Crimson Avenger, Lee Travis, who would give him a design for a gun that he would later use for releasing a sleeping gas. Wesley would soon become a founding member of the Justice Society of America. He would soon meet his love interest, Diane Belmont, daughter of the district attorney. Diane Belmont accepted his secret identity and even helped him at the time by being his getaway driver. Diane was also responsible for designing the purple and yellow costume that Wesley wore while he was in the All-Star Squadron. Tarantula also got his costume inspiration from Diane Belmont. One night when Wesley was out of town, Diane wore the costume to take down a Nazi spy ring but was mortally attacked. He later adopted Diane's nephew, Sandy Hawkins, who became his costume sidekick as Sandy the Golden Boy. Sandy swades Wesley to get a new costume of gold and purple color. On one of his experiments, an explosion transpired that infused Sandy with radioactive particles that transformed Sandy into a silicoid monster. Wesley sedated him and kept him in a large chamber out of fear from the public's misunderstanding. Wesley shortly retired as the Sandman and spent his next years as a businessman and finding ways to cure Sandy. He later emerged from retirement with his original costume while Sandy escaped from the chamber. It took the combined forces of the Justice League and the Justice Society to subdue him. It was then revealed that Sandy was lucid and conscious all this time in his chamber. With intense guilt, Wesley sought psychiatric help from Dr. Raymond Baxter who made him forget his life as the Sandman. Now old, Wesley had a prophetic dream about his death and of a growing supernatural threat, a being known as the Dark Lord who would stop the arrival of the new Doctor Fate. He climbed Mount Kailash with Speed Saunders and contacted the Grey Man. Mordru then appeared out of nowhere and threatened Wesley with a perpetual agony if he did not disclose to him what he knew about the coming of the new Doctor Fate. Wesley jumped off the mountaintop killing himself rather than telling Mordru anything. On his death, he was laid in Valhalla Cemetery beside his beloved Dian Belmont. Now, let's meet the seven soldiers of victory. First is the Shining Knight. Sir Justin Arthur aka the Shining Knight is a hero from the 6th century. Yearning to become a knight of the round table, Sir Justin agreed to avenge the death of Sir Fallon, Queen Guinevere's cousin who was recently killed by an ogre in the north. Traveling from Camelot, he rescued an old man on the way. This old man apparently was Merlin, King Arthur's sorcerer. In gratitude, Merlin empowered Sir Justin's equipment allowing his sword to cut through almost any kind of matter and furnishing his armor nearly resistant to any kind of damage, protecting him from freezing, burning, and possibly also electrocution and radiation. Merlin also made his chainmail armor become light and cool and turned into gold. Merlin also granted wings to his horse Victory. However, in his preceding battle with an ogre in the north, they fell in an icy crevasse that eventually trapped them both for 1,300 years. Forward to the 20th century, an archaeologist from New York discovered Sir Justin's frozen but still living body and steed and thawed them. 
It was hard for him to adjust at first with the modern world because the knights of the round table were no more. However, he soon decided that he would stick to his vow of justice and defending the innocent, so he took on the moniker of Shining Knight and created the Seven Soldiers of Victory, becoming its first informal leader. He also later joined the All-Star Squadron and his sword was once called Excalibur. He would later fall in love with Danette Riley aka Firebrand. When the Nazis reached England, Shining Knight traveled to his homeland to offer his services to the king and was assigned as the personal protector of Winston Churchill. During the Blitz, Shining Knight saved a young man named Percival Sheldrake, the young Earl of Fordenshire. Percival's father was killed in North Africa, and while traveling to London, he and his mother were caught in the Luftwaffe's bombing raids. His mother died and Shining Knight adopted Percival as his sidekick. Percival then became known as the Squire. In the Battle of the Seven Soldiers with Nebula Mem, the Seven Soldiers were scattered into different timelines. Shining Knight was sent to ancient China and became controlled by Genghis Khan. Crimson Avenger was sent to ancient central Mexico and became king of the Aztecs. Green Arrow was sent to the old English countryside. Stripe Sea became a slave in ancient Egypt. The Vigilante was sent to the old Native American tribes. The Star Spangled Kid was sent with the cavemen. Speedy turned into a centaur by Circe in the Mediterranean. And Wing, Crimson Avenger's sidekick, was sent to the Himalayas. The JLA and JSA helped them get back to the present time. After the war, Merlin would frequently allow Shining Knight to travel periodically to Camelot in the past to aid his fellow knights. On one adventure, he and the other knights were sent on a quest to recover the legendary Holy Grail to defend their kingdom against Morgan Le Fay. They successfully retrieved the Grail but Camelot still fell. The following years were hard for Shining Knight. The Dragon King killed Firebrand and the Squire was killed by spring Hill Jack. However, he was later revealed to have become the amnesiac janitor at Blue Valley High School, which is the school of Stargirl. Shining Knight suffered temporary amnesia, but he was helped by Stripesy to get back to his normal self and avenge Firebrand. He was also helped by Vixen, Captain Marvel, and Firestorm to avenge Sue Dibney, the wife of the elongated man who was murdered. In the battle with the Shadow Thief, Shining Knight's sword was stolen by the Shadow Thief and stabbed Firestorm with it. Firestorm's heat energy melted the sword but exploding Firestorm in the process and out of guilt, Shining Knight went into hiding and was never seen again. Junior's doing this for attention? I'm telling you now, this little distraction better not interfere. Next are Green Arrow and Speedy. Born in the western US and an avid historian, Oliver Queen lived with Native Americans on the reservations to study their tribal lifestyle. He became an expert on this field of study that resulted for him to collect many Native American relics and artifacts and obtain outstanding skills in archery. On his search for hidden American Indian artifacts in Los Mesa, Oliver was ambushed by museum robbers and was placed in a cave where he saw the young Roy Harper, an orphan, also captured previously by the same robbers. Roy was traveling with his father and Kowog in Los Mesa when their plane crashed. His father was also interested in the relics in Los Mesa. His father died in the crash and Roy and Kowog were trapped in Los Mesa. Another plane came and this plane contained Oliver and the people who kidnapped him. Kowog helped them escape but was shot. Oliver and Roy armed themselves with bow and arrow and stumbled upon the hidden artifacts while trying to escape. With Roy's quick moves in the cave, one of the enemies said a boy that kid is really speedy and another said watch out for the big guy he shoots a mean green arrow. These words were then used by Oliver and Roy to call themselves Green Arrow and Speedy later on. Oliver then took Roy as his new ward and inspired by Batman, they became masked vigilantes. Now known as Green Arrow and Speedy, they soon became founding members of the Seven Soldiers of Victory and were inducted into the US government sponsored All-Star Squadron. After World War II, the JSA disbanded and the U.S. House of Un-American Activities Commission banned most of masked heroes' activities. 
Green Arrow and Speedy still had some active battles, but all members of the Seven Soldiers of Victory were then kidnapped and dispersed throughout time by the Nebula Man. Green Arrow was sent to 12th century England and became the inspiration of Robin Hood, before being rescued by Dr. Midnight, Wonder Woman, and Hawkman. When the Seven Soldiers returned to the late 20th century, although Green Arrow has returned as a more experienced combatant, his arrow tricks and non-lethal techniques have become ineffective, which pushed him to retire his heroic exploits. In the Crisis on Infinite Earths battle at the dawn of time, Green Arrow was killed by the shadow demons of the Anti-Monitor. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a pig. Gladys, it's for you! Next, we have the Crimson Avenger, the first masked hero of DC Comics. During the Great War, Lee Travis was a member of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade and later became a publisher of the Globe Leader, a newspaper company dedicated to reformist causes such as the support of war victims in China. However industrious and forward-thinking, Lee became more concerned with his company's sales and in his social status, which attracted the critical attention of fellow journalist Claudia Barker from Downtowner magazine. Lee's activities was also perceived to be misleading by his chauffeur and valley Wing Hao, a Chinese immigrant who moved to America to escape Japanese persecution and was against the tendency of rich Americans meddling with the problems of the world thinking they can be resolved by charity events. On one Halloween costume party, Lee wore a red costume that looked like a mixture of the Phantom of the Opera cape and the Lone Ranger getup. Then, a group of robbers dressed in alien costumes crashed the party who took the funds raised for charity and many other valuables of the guests. Claudia Barker was shot while one of the criminals stole her gold lighter. Lee held the dying Claudia who said, Qui vindicetti bit, which meant the Avenger will come. Enraged and with the help of Wing Hao, Lee chased the robbers in his limousine. He exchanged gunfire and drove them to a ditch. Wing and Lee subdued the thieves and retrieved the money and Claudia's gold lighter inscribed with Qui Vindicetti BIT, and this started his life as the Crimson Avenger and as a crime fighter. He used 45 caliber pistols and a sleeping gas gun. When the Crimson Avenger changed his costume to a form-fitting red unitard and a bullet hole symbol on the chest, Wing Hao donned a matching yellow costume and became Crimson Avenger's sidekick known as Wing and an honorary 8 member of the Seven Soldiers of Victory. When Nebula Man scattered the Seven Soldiers in time and space, Wing sacrificed his own life to defeat the villain. When Lee found out that he was dying, he was saddened by the idea that he will be forgotten. When he saw a tanker ship being hijacked by pirates because of its experimental chemicals on board, he quickly sprang into action with his costume. On his way to the tanker, he saved a Hispanic boy. In the tanker, the Crimson Avenger fought the hijackers, helped the passengers escape, and sacrificed his life to move the ticking time bomb in the ship away from the harbor. After the explosion, the passengers did not remember who saved them, but the Hispanic mother remembered him. Vigilante Gregory Sanders aka The Vigilante is a talented singer, a marksman, and a skillful horse rider. Born in Wyoming near the end of the First World War, Greg is a son of a distinguished lawman and grandson of a prominent Indian fighter. Despite not wanting to follow his father's footsteps and becoming a singer, he soon learned how to handle a gun and a lasso when his father was killed by bandits. He then swore to dedicate his life to justice and became the vigilante and became a member of the All-Star Squadron and the Seven Soldiers of Victory. He loves to ride a bike and his sidekick was Stuff the Chinatown Kid. The Star Spangled Kid, Sylvester Pemberton, is the first adolescent superhero who has an adult sidekick by the name of Pat Dugan aka Stripesy and they both became official members of the Seven Soldiers. They started their crime fighting activities when they took down some Nazis in a local cinema. At first, Sylvester is a non-powered hero using gadgets, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and his strategic mind to fight crime. When he joined the JSA, Starman designed a cosmic converter belt and gave it to Sylvester, 
and the belt gave him the ability to fly, enhanced strength and enhanced speed, stamina and agility. Occasionally, he also used Starman's Cosmic Rod. Later, while still being part of the JSA, Sylvester created the Los Angeles-based superhero team Infinity Inc. When he grew older, he became known as Skyman. Skyman had many actions with Infinity Inc. However, he died when Solomon Grundy burned his face with the insensate form of the poisonous Mr. Bones. Then, the mantle of Star Spangled Kid and the Cosmic Converter Belt was transferred to Courtney Whitmore, also known as Stargirl. What happened? That beatdown he handed you last year leave you with Superman issues? I can take it. Lastly, Pat Dugan aka Stripesy is the adult sidekick of the Star Spangled Kid. He was known as Stripesy when he was working with Sylvester Pemberton, the son of his employer. He took the name of Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E, when he worked with star girl Courtney Whitmer. Stripesy is a gifted mechanical engineer who built the Star Rocket Razor, a flying car for Sylvester, the Steel Eagle, the flying transporter for the JSA, and his own battle suit called Stripe or Special Tactics Robotic Integrated Power Enhancer. After the battle with Nebula Man, Pat Dugan married Maggie Shaw but she later left him so he raised his son Michael on his own and his patents were stolen by Arthur Pemberton, a relative of Sylvester's. Pat and Sylvester reconciled and secured the patents. Pat became involved with Infinity Inc. until Sylvester's death by the Injustice Society. Pat then remarried to Barbara Whitmore and lived in Blue Valley. His stepdaughter, Courtney Whitmore, found the cosmic converter belt while searching through his boxes and discovered his heroic past. He then created the robotic battle suit and Courtney became the second star spangled kid. Pat then became a reserve member of the JSA while raising his kids, supporting Stargirl, and transferring his knowledge to Michael. So that's it for part 2 of our Earth 2 research for DC Comics. Aside from being the costumed crime fighters of the Golden Age, it can be noted that most of the DC heroes that time had alternate identities that have served during the World War II, either in the Army, Navy, or the Air Force. Fear was everywhere but it was also the height of national pride and patriotism and the readers looked to comics to get inspiration or reprieve from the daily predicaments caused by the war. Are you ready for part 3? We are still open to your suggestions of Earth 2 characters you'd like to be mentioned. Let us know of your comments and please like, subscribe, and give thanks.